More events than you can count on your hand. Let's begin. Welcome back everyone to another episode. We have so much content that NetEase has announced. So let's get straight into it because we could be here for a long time if I don't get straight into it. So this week, of course, we're getting season 31 Essence 1. This new Essence brings along, of course, the S tier skin for the new hunter called Morpheus Vestibule, that the hunter is the shadow, by the way. The A tier skin for Embalmer called Hippocampus and the A tier skin for Aeroplane is called Strange Dreams. So this seems to be like a brain, dream, mind kind of themed Essence. And of course, since we're getting this new essence, we're also getting the new hunter that comes along with it. And that character is called the shadow. She has the ability to possess survivors with the ghost. She kind of can separate herself from her ghost form and her main body. And then she can kind of can go around with this ghost form and jump scare survivors, kind of giving them a meter that can then eventually make them kind of be stunned for a period of time. She can also teleport around the map using her kind of tablet stone tablet ability and many other abilities. She has so many. Just this week, she actually just got some adjustments in the test server. She got heavily nerfed. Her adjustments went like this. They nerfed the stone tablets. They nerfed her movement speed. They gave her less stun time on survivors when fully corrupted. She can no longer see quick messages when possessing survivors. Possession won't reset upon knocking a survivor down. The cooldown, I mean. There have been some specific survivor abilities adjusted when they're interacted with when they're being possessed and stuff. You can actually remove it if you're playing something like First Officer and you use your pocket watch, things like that. They reduced the radius of Yithian's revelation that I think is where you can see survivors through walls. They also increased the corruption radius when around a rocket chair and increased the effect I believe of how quickly it kind of builds up when you're near a rocket chair that has been possessed I guess more or less. Very complicated if you don't really understand the character. I have played a stream with her before so if you want to go and watch that go and check it out. With the new hunter and the new season of course we're getting a new season's logic path. It's bringing along an 80 skin for cowboy that I actually don't know what it's called. I couldn't find the name for it anywhere. I'm sure there is a name for it it, but I don't really know what it, where it is. It's also going to bring along a beta accessory that is like a boat and a portrait and portrait frame themed around the skin. There are also going to be new rank rewards as the new season begins and that's going to include the S tier for Mind's Eye called Radiance. Very cool accessory that creates like Aurora and Aurora lines under Mind's Eye when she's walking along with some fish that kind of jump up as well and uh, when she uses her cane to reveal the hunter it creates a really big beautiful kind of Aurora color with lines and stuff like that and also an effect under underneath the hunter. It looks like also when she smashes her cane, she can see in color again. And then at the end of the effect, she goes back to seeing in black and white. I'm not sure if that was just for the video or if that was actually what's going on, but that would be an interesting effect. There's an Aether accessory for Guard 26 called Frozen Gear that has some amazing effects, in my opinion, where it has slight icy effects on the timed bombs when they're ticking down. But when they explode, it creates big ice shard explosions everywhere. It's really, really nice effect. There's also an A tier for forward called Flash that creates a blue lightning effect when he's using his football and a kind of electric shock effect when he hits a hunter against the wall. So stuns them technically. One more thing we're getting this week is a character day and that character day is coming on the 19th of this month and it's going to be for Prospector. I believe 19th should be the day that this video is released so it's Prospector's character day or birthday. Yay! Go and do all the event stuff related to that. Apart from that I don't think we have any other character days this week so that should be all. Let's talk about what's coming from the future and Nettie's went crazy with revealing crossovers and stuff. We've got so many crossovers and events coming up soon. I hope I didn't miss anything in this video. So let's begin. On April 3rd, we're going to be getting an absolute ton of content, including and not only one skin for Hermit called Orientation Day that is quite cool. I kind of thought it looked a little bit like an ivory tower skin, not a one skin. So a little bit disappointed with it, but maybe it looks much better in game. They revealed more about the Arnold and Puppets crossover that they've got going on right now. On the 3rd of April, we're getting a special broadcast on the official YouTube channel of Identity 5. There's going to be, I assume, an animation for Identity 5 puppet things. It's going to be cool. There's also a special skin coming for this event that is an S tier skin for Gardener called Stage Host. I absolutely love this skin, at least from what I've seen. It didn't really look too deeply into it. It looks really, really cool. I kind of like wonky, weird skins like that. A crossover event that I think a lot of people are excited that's coming back again is we're getting the return of the Junji Ito crossover, the Junji Ito collection crossover that is bringing back all of the skins from ages ago that people really have wanted for such a long time. Those include the skins for Wu-Tang called the Intersection Bishonen, the skin for Lucky Guy called Shuichi, and the S tier skin that everybody loves for Dream Witch that's called Tomi Kawakami. 
All of these skins should be available in the store. I can't remember if they're going to be for fragments. I'm assuming you have to purchase them with echoes, but don't quote me on that, so I'm not really sure. But it's cool that those will be coming on April 3rd. More content that we're getting on April 3rd include the Ivory Tower skin for Magician that is going to be available. Don't really know what it's called yet, but it's just an Ivory Tower skin that's worth the purchase if you have 60 echoes lying around. And of course, we're getting the champion skins for Antiquarian and for Dream Witch from Last Koa, Doll 5's winning champion skins. They look really cool. I've talked about them in the past. This isn't really too new, but I thought I would add it here since it's all coming on April 3rd. You thought that's all that's coming from April 3rd? Well, no, because we're also getting an event as far as I can tell, and that's called the Truth and Inference, the Voyage of Oceanus event. This event, I don't really, really understand what's going on with this event, but if you log in, there are going to be different rewards, including an event portrait, a special dish, and a furniture piece that looks like a globe that I guess you could put on a desk or a table or on the floor. I don't really know where they expect you to put that one. Maybe it's bigger than I thought it was. There's going to be story rewards. That means there's going to be a story event. The rewards include a beta skin for journalists that we keep on getting beta skins for journalists as rewards. Very weird and wonky. We're getting a beta accessory and a standby motion unlock card that is permanent. There's going to be a mini game. So we know that now and all of the rewards that come along with that include a permanent character unlock card, a permanent emote unlock card, a permanent what looks like to be B tier unlock card and an event label that will probably be called something Voyage of Oceanus something or other. There are going to be event tasks. If you do all of those event tasks, you'll get different rewards, including a ranking protection card, an A tier costume unlock card that I think is permanent and a dynamic graffiti. So they're giving us a ton of content during this Truth and Inference Voyage Voyage of Oceanus event. This might be connected to the anniversary event that we're getting, so this is very exciting. Let's move on from April 3rd and move on to April 11th, because on April 11th, we're also getting a ton of content, including, and not only, the Composer S tier skin package that we still haven't got a name for yet. This skin looks like it's jellyfish themed. He's looking at a jellyfish and he also has like a jellyfish badge on his chest, so he's guess it could be called jellyfish or something he's got ink all over him very interesting on april 11th we're also getting season 31 essence 2 and they revealed that essence before we even got this current essence that we're about to get this seemingly is going to be themed around the truth and inference event that i just talked about the voyage of oceanus because there's it's on a boat and we're getting an s tier skin for mercenary that i think it's mercenary an a tier skin for soul reaver looks really cool and an a tier skin for doctor as far as i can tell but if you thought the Voyage of Oceanus was only a small event or a big event, well, we're getting another event that seems to be also connected to Season 31 Essence 2, and that's coming on April 11th. And it's going to bring new furniture to the store, new dishes in the Spyglass store, new rewards if you recharge 400,000 Echoes or 500,000 Echoes, respectively, new rewards for logging in if you've logged in for more than 2,000 days that I'm nowhere near at this point. Ivory Tower and One Skins will be returning, so this is mostly the anniversary event as far as I can tell and event store skins including furniture and emotes that will return and the dartboard is returning to the store so this is the interactive game mode kind of thing that you can put into your room. On April 25th, so we've gone April 3rd, April 11th, April 25th now, we'll be getting the crossover that a lot of people have been anticipating, and that is the Little Nightmares crossover. This Little Nightmares crossover is going to include two skins that I assume are going to be added to the store, including the little girl skin called Six and the Axe Boy skin called Mono. I'm assuming there'll also be a mini event or a big event possibly connected to this crossover as it is a big IP, but we don't really know too much about that. We do know what the skins look like though, and they look very cool. A full month later, or just under a month later, on May 16th, we'll be getting another crossover, and that is the return of the Bee Duck crossover. This is going to be the third time this crossover returns, as far as I can tell, and this crossover just brings along two skins, a Mercenary A tier skin and a Guard 26 S tier skin, if I remember correctly. Let's talk a little bit about some things that have been announced, but haven't really been given dates, as far as I can tell. There's another crossover coming sometime this year, in 2024, that is the China Academy of Art crossover. This must be part of a kind of collaboration with a university or with some type of institute where maybe some people that are part of this institute will actually design the skins themselves. I'm not really sure. What it will include is one A tier skin that you'll be able to purchase
purchase in the store and another A tier skin that will be free for everyone who participates in the event. Now Diesel has also shown us an image that they're adding some special phone widgets for Identity 5. These are like big things that you can put on your home screen. This is something that's existed on Androids for like over a decade at this point and has recently been added to Apple I think in the last five years or so. So it looks like this will only be coming to Apple at first because I don't think they announced any Android version. It didn't look like they had an Android version. Maybe it'll also be added to Android as well but it looks like they're starting with Apple widgets. This will be interesting because you'll be able to see color stats I think and also events in the game on your home screen if you want to. And if that's not all, we've also had the announcement of the new Truth and Inference 6th anniversary gift box called Qilin of the East that includes a special Wu Chang skin that I can imagine is going to be either an A tier or an S tier skin and it will probably include a pet and all of the other accessory stuff that come in this special Truth and Inference gift box. They've only just announced the art for it so we'll see more stuff over the next coming weeks or maybe the next coming months. So much content announced and it's really exciting to see because we've had a couple of boring weeks I would say so far. But as we're waiting for all of these events to arrive and as you're waiting for the new content, the new season and the new essence and everything to come out, you might want to watch some Identity 5 lore. So click on the video on the screen right now to learn a little bit more about Bloody Queen's story.